you don't normally think of posture and safety as issues that go hand in hand, but they actually do. There's a thing called heads forward posture that kind of bothers some people with Parkinson's, as it did my dad, and the rounded shoulders. If you're standing normally in a door jam like this, you're going to stack your ears over your shoulders, over your hips, and you'd probably be pretty balanced. You can draw a line through my body here as I do this. But with a heads forward posture, if my hips are touching and my shoulders are touching, my head is going forward, and you can see that I would lean forward, that, that uh, gravity would be pulling me forward when I'm walking. If I wanted to try and put my head against the door jam and I had heads forward posture and have my shoulders touching as well, my hips very well may not touch. So now we're going to take a quick look at heads forward posture and then regular posture. You can definitely see the difference. If you took a yardstick and wanted to look for rounded shoulders, you'd probably be able to have a yardstick touch both of the tips of your shoulders. If you have good posture, that yardstick is going to rock back and forth on the breastbone as shown here. That's a good incentive to push those shoulders back. Falling is the first safety issue that has to do with posture. If you're upright, you're probably not going to fall unless you happen to stumble. Your eyes are forward, your shoulders are back, and you also don't see your shoes. These shoes I put little stickies on. If you were walking and you're looking forward with round shoulder posture or for heads forward posture, you may see the toes of your shoes. It will remind you to stand up straight. Taking a look here, you can see a person walking or standing and a little bit afraid to fall. And this is what's starting to lead to that poor rounded shoulder posture. Look how the arms are hanging in front of the body. And with the arms hanging in front of the body, if you take steps, the arms can only be in front of the body instead of swinging forward and back. You can see that my left hand is behind my hips here, and that helps balance me as I'm moving. When a cane is necessary to support your body, you can see that the cane actually lets you lean to one side. Whether you're leaning side to side or forward and back, it's a negative on your posture. Try using some modified ski poles or some of those neat walking sticks and just take your purse and strap it across your chest if need be. Pain becomes an issue generally from the shoulders and the neck because it slows us down. It doesn't let us move comfortably and quickly and it makes us more unbalanced when that happens. We can't even move as quickly to go help someone else in a bad situation. When I raise the box, a box underneath my computer, you can see that my neck and head go up, and when I put it on a lap tray, I get higher. My hands are up on the keyboard, but if all you're doing is surfing the net, you can put your hand underneath and look at that good posture. Watch again as I go from the table to a box and then up to the lap tray, seat, having it sitting on the table. Look at my head in relation to my shoulders and arms. When I'm using the computer on my lap, I'm all scrunched down, and pain is going to be an issue for me. I've had a neck injury. If I put a board underneath my computer and make it span from arm to arm, I'm much more upright and more comfortable. You never think about choking and posture, but it's really common. A lot of people have a gag problem or a reflex problem with Parkinson's. Look how my neck is back. If I take a sip of water there, my feet are up and I'm nice and comfortable, it's really common to have that hit the glottis and make you cough and gag and choke. If you have your feet down, and your head up and a pillow behind you to keep you as upright as possible, it's very probable that you won't be choking as often. I'm using an armless chair here so you can see my posture as I slouch in my chair. Look at the gap behind my fanny there and the back of the chair. Now, if I needed to take a deep breath, I couldn't do it. And I'd like you to try right now seated in your chair. If you're scrunched over, and you can only get a little bit of air in your lungs, you can't shout in case there's an emergency. 
if you're sitting upright like this, you can really get a deep breath of air and you could call for help in the event that either you're stuck or your partner has fallen on the floor and needs help. Again, notice my backside in relation to the back of the chair. If you can't scoot all the way back on your chair, use a rolled towel to keep your posture a little bit better upright. This applies to any chair. No matter what your posture, like this or good posture, or a hard chair or an easier chair to get out of, if there's a chair with no arms, getting out of the chair can often be a difficult situation especially if you need to go and help someone or you need to answer the phone or get to a hot burner. You can scoot yourself forward on the chair. Notice how I have my hands forward on the chair. I'm scooting by rocking from side to side and coming forward on the edge of the chair. Then I have my feet firmly down on the floor. Kind of pull your heels in just a little bit. Lean forward and then you can stand up. You're leaning forward, rising, coming up from the chair, and then standing. You should be able to move from this position. At this point in the video, I usually have some clever thing that invites you to come over and join me on Facebook, find Parkinson-specific exercises and ideas, or ask you to join me on YouTube under my name, and you'll find a lot of things by Cheryl Klingelhofer. I'm a master fitness trainer, and I try to bring everything that I can to you with Parkinson's. However, I'm not the only one involved here. I had to have somebody take pictures with the camera since my recording devices were down. So here is my dear husband, my patient husband, my wonderful husband, and photographer of the day.